while ago I discovered what might be my favorite vintage drum synth and after a few years I was finally able to track one down for a good price. The first time I heard it was on an album that completely changed my outlook on electronic music. That album was Crush by Floating Points from 2019. And I did a deep dive on all of the instruments that were used, including super rare stuff like the Yamaha CS70 or the Rolls Chroma. But for the drums, it heavily relied on a drum synth that was discontinued almost 25 years ago and in my opinion isn't talked about nearly enough, the MAM ADX1. All right, here we have it. And now let me show you why I love this thing so much. Yeah, maybe let's add a little bass line to give some musical context here. You get the idea and what i love about this so much aesthetically speaking is that it has this super um, raw aggressive almost primitive kind of sound because all the techniques that are used in here are very basic yeah the kick is just a sine wave and uh, all the other sounds except the synth are pretty much just white noise uh, being filtered and uh, they all have this uh, free cycling lfo which you can almost not control at all except from from the amount and the result just sounds so raw and so timeless and almost like it comes from the start of electronic music from way back even though it's from the late 90s early 2000s and also once you start overdriving this i'm having it hooked up to my mackie and when i go too loud it's going to overdrive in the preamp of the mixer Yeah, it just melts everything together and, and makes it even more aggressive and uh, raw in a sense. But now let's have a look at uh, all of the individual channels, because there's just five of them. First one is called Metal, and I think it's supposed to be some kind of ride Kimble sound or whatever. But it's basically a, this sound and this sound, and you can mix them, and they both seem to be some kind of noise source. You can either use one or the other or a mixture. And yeah, just noise being filtered by these two bandpass filters. Confusingly, cut of two controls mix one sound and cut of one controls mix two sound. Yeah, but even if they have the same filter position, you can hear it's slightly different noise sources somehow. Then you have your typical drum synth type short envelope. And here you have the mentioned LFO, which starts modulating cut of one. And if I increase the resonance. get some very interesting sounds already. Yeah, this almost sounds like, like a percussion because the resonance of the filter, if it moves quickly enough, it almost sounds like, a, like an oscillator. Yeah, beautiful. Then next, the hi-hat sound, which I would have called metal, and this one I would, would have called hi-hat, because this one to me sounds more metallic. You have also, again, a noise source, works pretty similar to the top row and then you have this more metallic sound which to me sounds almost like a triangle yeah not the waveform but the actual physical metal triangle kind of sound and again you have a filter and a modulation for the filter and resonance And then you can mix it with this noise sound. And you can see already in these two sounds there's a lot going on. Same goes for the snare sound regarding the modulation and the filter. And one thing that you can really beautifully notice here um, about the snare, but it's actually the case for all these three top sounds here. 
is that there's actually two different MIDI notes going into it, and one is for close and one is for open, uh, similar to 909 hi hat where, where the, they are sort of like in a cho choke group where the closed hi hat closes the open hi hat. And this is a really beautiful effect here. Some of the notes that go in here are longer, or are the, are the corresponding note for the open sound. And once in a while you have this long noise sound that almost isn't uh, like a clap or a snare anymore, but just a noise uh, sculpture being sculpted here by the modulation of the filter and then bam, suddenly being cut off by a shorter clap sound. Yeah, which I really, really like. And then here again, it's just a noise source and one bandpass filter and another one and I, I think they are in parallel. But they sh seem to share the resonance. And the more modulation you have and the more resonance, the more it sounds like something way different with a lot of movement. Up next here, the synth. It's um, pretty much just this one uh, oscillator here with LFM control. And then you have this additional tuning two and two, uh, three. Yeah, which just modulate it and make it more complex sound. So you can use these three tuning knobs to control the timbre. But this one is actually the master, so to say, because if you move this one, all of these will move accordingly. And these two just control the pitch relative to the fundamental frequency. And here again, you have a modulation. In this case, not controlling a filter, but the tuning. Um, and lastly, the kick drum, also really lovely. Also very primitive sounding, yeah, just a typical uh, sine wave or triangle wave or whatever, with a bit of pitch bend, if you like. Interestingly, though, also in the other direction. Yeah, where it starts lower and then goes up. But the typical kick drum would have subtle pitch bend at the beginning going down. Yeah, but also if it has barely any pitch bend, I think it sounds really lovely. It has this built-in distortion here. Without any distortion, it almost doesn't sound like an electronic kick drum, but almost like an acoustic kick drum. And once you start distorting it a bit, let's sound more electronic. But some of you will now have noticed, wait a minute, I kind of know this layout from somewhere and you'd be right because uh, the Vermona DRM is actually based on this one. When this was continued around uh, 2000, um, a bit afterwards Vermona pretty much carried on the legacy uh, of this and developed it into the Vermona DRM. Uh, and in between there was also, I think, Mode Machines uh, also did a version of the ADX one. Um, but yeah, nowadays you pretty much just see the Vermona DRM and you don't hear a lot about the ADX one. So I'm excited to check out uh, what Vermona has done to it in the last couple decades. Here we have it, the Vermona DRM one Mark IV in this case, the newest version, I think. Um, and let's first have a little listen. Yeah, all right. As you can see, it sounds pretty different, even though it looks fairly similar from the layout. Um, we have more channels, so we don't just have the snare that we're used to from the ADX-1. But we also have a clap.
And the main thing that I notice sound-wise is that everything just sounds much more high-tech, much more sharp, much more controlled. Also, when you touch the potis, you feel like the sound is much more at your t fingertip and it's less wild and yeah, just much more controlled. Also, on the snare and the hi-hat, you don't have the same uh, random modulation that I love so much about the ADX1. So I would think even though to all the similarities and the lineage that they share, in my opinion this is a completely different drum machine with a completely different aesthetic, even though the approach is super similar, the result is very different. And I think this here is of course actually the objectively superior drum synth because there's loads more you can do with it at once and you can push the sound into much more uh, aesthetic directions and you have just much more control. But uh, for me personally, I'm going to stick with the ADX-1 because I really like it for what it is and how it sounds like. And it always sounds the same also pretty much. Uh, and it's just one of the sounds that I like to have in my repertoire. Um, but this shouldn't discourage you from considering the DIM-1 if you are into uh, yeah, having a bit more control. And if maybe the ADX-1 uh, doesn't fit your personal taste immediately like it did for me. Mm -hmm. 